everybody just back with another video so got a uh, brian lilly just talking about trudeau's polling numbers and how bad it's gotten and how bad it can potentially be it's just a quick little short but let's uh have a quick look at this then we're going to talk about that after like usual the latest polling isn't just showing that justin trudeau's liberals have very little support with voters it's showing that there's no path back for them as well depending on who you listen to the conservatives are either at 43 percent that's abacus or 41 percent leger but both polling firms agree that trudeau liberals have about 23 percent that's less than one in four canadians say they will vote for the current government that's appalling in quebec Abacus even has the Conservatives ahead by one. 31% for them, 30 for the Bloc Quebecois and the Trudeau Liberals. You look at the issues that matter to Canadians, including health care, uh, immigration, the economy. The Conservatives are beating the Liberals. There is no easy path back. Even on Best PM, Pierre Polyev is polling at 29%. That's almost double Trudeau's 16%. Things are looking bad for Trudeau. Looking very good for Polyev, though. Yeah, and you know, that's the thing, right? I mean, Justin Trudeau has been... Oh, sorry about that. So Justin Trudeau, I mean, he, if you look at the polling, I mean, he's been just stuck in the mud, basically. Kind of like a certain other politician who I'm going to talk about also very briefly after we get through this. Um, but, you know, he's just constantly stuck at 24%. Now, see, um, sorry, Canada 338, they do a really good job with polling. But their polling isn't just about current projections. They also go off of, like, historic projections as well. So... Usually a model like that, I think, would be pretty accurate. However, in this case, history is not on the liberal side, right? So even though it's like, yeah, they've done that well in the past, this factors into this polling model. Now, since that's the case, I expect his numbers to be way lower than 23, 24%. Because there, as I mean, history would show that liberals do pretty well, especially in big cities. They're still going to do well in Toronto and Montreal, but not as well as they have before. And they're going to get wiped out all, all over the rest of Canada, pretty much. You also have a lot of people who are like me, who have just kind of gone into politics the past couple years. And maybe they've never voted before or they voted liberal once. But now they're pretty angry. They're really pissed off. They're not voting for Trudeau, but they are going out to vote. They're not voting for Singh either. They're going to vote for Pierre Polyev. Those people who don't usually vote certainly don't ever take polls. Those people are not factored into this at all. So how many more people, like I, I do think we're going to have a very high turnout. I can't remember what the exact turnout was in 2021, but we will have a higher turnout in my opinion because there are so many people who are just desperate to get rid of Trudeau. Even if they don't usually vote or usually care about politics, I know many people right now who feel that way. They're voting for Pierre Polyev just to get Trudeau out. Now, to be fair, out of the friends and family that I have that I've talked to about this, this isn't exactly like a big, you know, Canada-wide sample size or a Canada-wide, like, um, polling data or anything like that. But if that's kind of trending around Canada, if that idea is, hey, I don't even really care about politics, but Trudeau's got to go, oh, Pierre Polyev, he could easily get 50% of the vote and 250 seats if that happens. Will that happen? A lot of people are like, well, I don't know. I don't think so. I personally do think so. I've thought about this a lot. I know there's people saying, you know, I think he can get to 225, 230. I honestly think that he can and will get to 250. So these polling models, even though it's like, okay, well, Pierre Polyev's going to win, win a majority either way. That's true. But this isn't just about that. This is about sending a message to the Liberals and the NDP. You guys are supposed to be the center left party. And you've gone far woke left. And most Canadians don't like it. And they're about to find that out in the hard way. And we all can't wait to look forward to that, I'm sure. It's going to be really funny to see if the block actually wins second place by seats, which they actually can, and it looks like they, they have a really good shot of doing that. So the Conservatives would have this massive caucus, who would be, of course, you know, the, the party in charge, and then you'd have the Bloc Quebecois, who only is represented in one friggin' province, be the official opposition, while the Green Party, the NDP, and the Liberals are all sitting in the corner playing with themselves. I can't wait to see it. We all know it's going to happen. Let the liberals talk online. They think that Justin Trudeau is going to be on the rise. He's done. There's just too many people that are done with him and done with the liberal party for at least a very long time. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there was another politician who I said was stuck in the mud, and I wanted to talk about that a little bit. So 
if you've watched this channel, I've been pretty critical of Justin Trudeau and Jagmeet Singh, but also of Maxime Bernier, because as I said, in my opinion, I think he's a weak leader. He's stuck in the mud. He can't win a by-election. And I don't really ever see him out. Like right now is a really good time for him to get out and start campaigning and you know doing some things. And I'm like, why am I never seeing him post anything on X? Because I do follow him. Well, I found out why. Maxim Bernier, you are blocked from following Maxim Bernier and viewing Maxim Bernier's posts. So clearly you've read or heard what I've said about you. All this does, loser, is prove that I was right. You can't handle a little bit of criticism. It's not like I went too far and used some like weird slander or anything like that. I just said the truth. You are weak. You can't win a by-election. You're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. And yet the populace of this of this country who I believe are the smartest political people in this country, I would say that I'm more of a populist. So let me ask you populist, is this your leader? Is this the guy who can't handle a little bit of criticism? The one that's going to go after the oligarchies and stop immigration. And he's going to put Canada first. He can't handle a little bit of criticism. And that's your savior. You think people who think that Pierre Paul Yev are stupid for thinking that he's going to save Canada. If you think this French idiot is going to save Canada, you're also stupid. Can't handle a little bit of criticism. He blocked someone who actually voted for him in 2021. And if you listen to my advice, I would vote for him again. But he's a loser. He's weak. He can't win. And now he's blocking and turning on his own people. Nice. That's the guy who's going to beat the oligarchy. Like I said, PPC, wake up or you're, you might as well just fold your party. Let's get an actual populist libertarian or some, some sort of actual Canada first center leaning party. That way we can actually get somewhere potentially. Cause I think a lot of the criticisms about Pierre Polyev might be true. Maybe not, but I'm definitely suspicious and aware of it. I have a very hard time trusting politicians as I've said this on this channel many times, but I mean, you've, you've lost my vote forever now, dummy. What are you going to like? What a stupid move. Oh, I can't handle the criticism. Well, you're going you're gonna to be able to handle losing another election. What's going to happen when you lose another by-election to another conservative with the worst campaign manager you've ever seen? Look into that, by the way. The guy's name was Brandon, and his slogan was, let's go, Brandon. And this was after the Joe Biden thing in the States. He still couldn't beat that guy, and he was in the most heavy populist vote region of Canada. I believe it was like Winnipeg Center or something like that just north of Winnipeg <clears throat> in the center of Manitoba. That was his best chance to win a by-election. He lost to an idiot. So there you go, guys. That's your leader. That's the guy you're going to you're gonna waste your vote on so we can get another 1% to 2%. PPC, get your shit together and find a real leader. Find someone who can actually take criticism who isn't a gigantic baby. And, you know, maybe let's find a politician who isn't from Quebec this time, too. I don't know about you guys. I'm kind of tired of French politicians. Paul Yev, I know he's born in Calgary, but his French name, Bernier, Blanchet, Trudeau. It's like, all right, you know, let's let's get let's get someone else in there. These French politicians can't can't uh, take criticism too well, apparently. So, but anyway, that was a, the last part was a bit of a troll, but that's okay. It, when you, when you block someone like that and you you act like that much of an idiot and a weakling, as I criticized you before, you kind of deserve it. So let me know what you guys think. Did, did Maxim Bernier? Did I deserve to be blocked by Maxim Bernier because I made correct criticisms about him? And also, what do you think about Justin Trudeau's chances? What do you think about the um, the chances of Pierre Polyev getting 250 seats? Uh, I hope it happens. Let me know what you guys think. I always appreciate uh, looking at and reading your comments and engaging with you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll be back shortly with another video.